Before the break, we asked if cloves help relieve toothaches. The answer? Yes. Cloves and clove oil will temporarily numb an aching tooth. But be careful. Too much clove oil can burn your gums. As we learned earlier in the program, our bread is about to be fortified by folic acid. This is to be followed a few weeks later by the addition of iodine as well. Now most of us know iodine as coming from a bottle and being used on wounds to prevent infection. But we also need it inside our bodies for a healthy brain and thyroid. So where does it come from? And why is it that over 40% of Australians are iodine deficient? Like iron and calcium, iodine is an essential micronutrient which we all need for proper growth and development. But alarmingly, almost one Australian in two isn't getting enough of this vital element in their diet. Iodine is found in soil, and from the soil, it enters our food cycle through plant life. It makes its way into the vegetation, and then into our livestock who are grazing on pastures. But over the millennia, rain has been leaching the topsoil from farmland. The result? Well, iodine deficient soil and iodine deficient diets. The results of iodine deficiency can be devastating. They include thyroid conditions such as goiter. And among children of iodine deficient mothers, possible mental retardation. So iodine is absolutely crucial for a healthy thyroid and brain development and function. The average child needs 120 micrograms of iodine per day, while adults require 150. However, if you're pregnant or breastfeeding, you'll need 200 micrograms every day. Studies back in 1992 showed we were all getting enough iodine in our diet. So why, over the past 17 years, has there been such a dramatic drop in our iodine levels? It all has to do with what was once our primary source of the stuff, dairy products. Well, the most common household food that you'll get your iodine from will be the dairy, mm -hmm. but the amounts aren't all that high, so we're looking around 30 micrograms per serve. Okay, so realistically we're talking between four to six serves of these to get our iodine load, and that's probably not really recommended in itself. No, well, you know, you will obviously exceed calories and other issues may arise, but no iodine, you won't hit the mark. Right. But that wasn't the case until late last century. In fact, through the 1950s, right up until the early 90s, we were hitting the mark. That's because back then, iodine levels in milk were being accidentally bolstered. You see, they used to sterilise milk processing equipment using iodine. And that meant some of it ended up mixing into our milk. But in the early 1990s, dairy producers switched to chlorine as the cleaning agent, which is the main reason for the country's current iodine deficiency. Professor Creswell Eastman is an iodine expert. When it comes to iodine awareness, he says Australia lags way behind Western nations like the US and Canada. Americans have been well educated about iodine deficiency uh, going back to the 1920s. So the Americans moved to iodize all table salt, all cooking and table salt. These countries also iodize the salt used in the manufacture of processed foods, which is where we all get most of our salt. So what went wrong over here? It's been overlooked in Australia. It's been something that's been ignored by public health authorities. So nothing much has been done about it. Until now, salt is a common ingredient in bread. And as of October this year, all manufacturers of bread products, except organic ones, will be required to use iodized salt. But will that solve the iodine problem? No, it's not enough. It's a step in the right direction. And the mandatory fortification of bread will theoretically improve iodine intake in children by about a third. And that will improve the situation, but doesn't fix it. But I'd like to see more foods with iodized salt, for example, biscuits or cereals, snack foods, and that could be easily done. And that would raise the level of iodine in the community very significantly. 
So what can we do right now to ensure we're at least getting more iodine in our diets? The answer lies where all that iodine winds up, after it's leached from the soil. It's been washed into the rivers and goes into the sea. So the oceans are rich in iodine as a consequence. The healthiest source of iodine is found in seafood, and not just the swimming variety. Well, seafood in general is rich in iodine, and particularly seaweed. So I would certainly choose seafood as your first choice of iodine. So things like the salmon, um, how much iodine would we get in that? Mm. Depending on the portion, it could be from 30 to 50 micrograms. Uh, the dry seaweed will be around, again, the 30, 50, depends on how much you're having. Plus, whenever you use salt in your cooking or on your food, use iodised salt. Well, people do get confused and they often drift towards salt sources that come from the sea because we know iodised foods are found in the sea. And unfortunately, these have negligible amounts of iodine and so we need to move people from the sea salt and other alternatives to an iodised salt, but you have to remember to use it sparingly. So while you shouldn't start eating more salt than normal, eat plenty of seafood, plus milk and other dairy products. But iodine supplements are still recommended for pregnant and breastfeeding mothers. We forevermore are going to have to ensure that we replace iodine in our diets, and that's throughout the world. If you'd like to know more about anything on tonight's show, please visit our website, sbs.com.au slash foodinvestigators. Next week on Food Investigators, is fat really making us a nation of fatties? We separate the fat from the fiction and the good oils from the bad. Why has diabetes type 2 become the fastest growing chronic disease in Australia? And how is the food we eat mainly to blame? And what foods can actually help put a smile back on your dial? Till next time, eat well, be healthy.